Good morning again, people. We are back on this flooded masterpiece job and my eyes are squinting because that thing up there in the sky is out. So we're all smiles, we're all happy today after what we had uh, a couple of, well, last week, it was horrendous. So yeah, this is the stage two, the, 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 the part two actually of the, uh, of the video. So we have progressed. So we get on there now, the boys are working. Let me spin it around, we'll show you uh, where we are with it. So this is where we are. I'm really pleased with this now. I mean, I was really worried last week that we were going to end up working in slop. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all very, very much for all your comments and input into uh, helping us on this one. There's a lot of good, valid points on there that I've listened to and, you know, it's, it's really aided us. So appreciate all your, all your comments and all your feedback and your input into it. So thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do help us uh, massively. We've sprayed these lines out now this morning, these blue lines. I'll show you down there now. So that dictates roughly where the brickwork is going to go. We've had the client out, meticulously sprayed it out. They're happy. Um, we've got about 150 mil of MOT type one in and it's absolutely rock solid um, and what I've done look is I've got a land drain still flowing if you've seen part one you'll know what I'm on about go back take a look at it part one of this video I've got this land drain going into the manhole temporarily and it's in there as well look in that part of the ground here so any water comes into here and if it does start raining again then we've got an outlet that's going to go in and do what it was doing on part one so we got all that in now. The lads, what they're doing is they're transferring a level from our finished level of patio um, here, and then they're gonna transfer that right the way out to the start of what is gonna be a set of steps. The next couple of days now we'll be concreting, getting the footings in. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, we can try and get some bricklaying uh, started. Um, so yeah, we'll get a little bit further along and uh, keep you informed on the next bit. So much happier. This week, hopefully, that stuff up there stays like that. There's a little bit of sun up there somewhere, somewhere, but it's blue skies at the moment. So if it stays like this, I'm a happy camper. This is what we got here. I just thought I'd show you this. So what we did, look, we took a, a level from the finished patio uh, on, on the, just under the damp proof course over there. We dragged our level through uh, just as a turn of a bubble. Uh, so we've got our full setup. We've got this set up to that now. So the distance from the top of the patio, well, that represents the top of the Indian sandstone, the top of the patio slabs. So we've got 60 mil between that and that. So that's set up for a 20 mil patio slab. And then we've got the rest of it. Then the 40 mil is the bed, the cement bed underneath that. So that's set up for that. So then what we've got to distinguish now is how deep these foundations go. Because obviously where the steps are in front of us in that bit there, we need to gauge the brickwork so that when we stand, come off the patio, we're, we're, we're going on to what is ideal, like a two brick step, 150 mil, six inch step up onto the patio. And then all those steps then will be the same, two courses of bricks each. So what we, we've set the dumpy level up now. So the measurement we've taken uh, on the dumpy level, on this level on top of that is one meter, 890. So what I want to do, I want to put a 250 mil thick concrete foundation in there plus I need about two courses of bricks below ground then is I've got I've got to get a measurement of two meters 290 on the dumpy level so from there to there is a difference of 400 mil so that's what I got to do as long as my dumpy level comes through here now and measures two meters 290 all the way through we know that when we put the concrete in and we get a peg set up we know the levels and it's, it's all being done so what we said was on the first part of the video that we were gonna, we'd had a chat with a client, giving it a couple of options. We won't go through it. You've got to go back and look at part one. Um, so where we were with it was we were gonna put a land drain in the back, wrap it all in the usual weed membrane and stuff, and then we were gonna take it and put it into eco drains, connect it into the uh, gullies, and uh, a way to go because if you connect it into the gullies, it's got the uh, you can't get the smell coming back from the manhole, so that kind of ticks a box because it is a, it is a combined drain. Um, and then likewise, it's got a silt trap in the gully. Um, so that kind of ticks the box with that. So what I did, I went to Welsh Water and I kind of tick, tried to tick a box with Welsh Water to see if legally we were able to tap in and put extra water into the, um, into the drainage system, i.e. 
the combined sewer that we've got the manholes on the back there so if you're doing yours it's really critical that you you know you find out from the relevant people that if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing or you need to change it based on the advice they give so phone welsh water yesterday a young lady come on the phone and she said yeah basically i see what you're in what you're doing blah 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 it sounds feasible what you need to do is you need to contact building control alan came out this morning alan davis our local building control officer he came out he said was that we can you know the water's got to go somewhere and by digging a soak away five meters away from the property which is regs it would be in the banking so the soak away would be at a higher level than the lower level patio so that that doesn't kind of tick a box you can't put a soak away anywhere on the property so we're back to this the water's got to go somewhere so we explained about you know digging down to invert and connecting the pipe into to the manhole sorry then we explained about the um uh connecting into uh, eco drains then um and he said yeah that's fine so we got to put a, a kind of silt trap in um to stop all the silt going in because the silt trap the one we bought on a previous job um cost 350 bloody quid and that was the cheapest one i could find um so if anybody does know of a silt trap cheaper than 350 quid let me know in the comments below but i think yeah he, he said that uh, we, we can connect up into the uh into the um eco drains and into the gully um because whichever way you connect it it's all going into the manhole anyway if you connect it up below ground and do all the digging and, and charge the customer it's going into the manhole if you connect it up into the uh, eco drains and let it go into the gully it's going into the manhole so i don't see you know any relevance to which way we do it it's all going in there anyway so as long as you top, stop your smell coming up and you, you stop the silk going in there then you've ticked all the right boxes haven't you so we've relayed it back to the clients now if you're somebody uh, that's having work undertaken on an extension or any building work or any landscaping work in your garden then you might be surprised to know this that you are actually responsible for the land or the surface water then and how you get rid of it within your within your property got to tick all these boxes which we've done there's a building control that's what they said to do building control have told us to crack on with it to do it so that's what we're going to do One. got it dug went in there with the dinger digger i said before that all this was done ass backwards eco drains over here should have gone in concrete over here should have gone in and then our level should have been made up off the eco drain um and dragged through but we had to do it ass backwards to try and get onto some solid ground so we've put all this in ass backwards um but all the footings are dug concrete's coming tomorrow what day is it tomorrow Thursday steps are just marked out roughly they're a bit wonky the crack on with that that's that's next <laughs> oh god right off to be good we're digging this out now freezers on the digger having a little blast on it we gotta just dig this out now to maintain the trench coming through get ready for concrete my other son's in with us again today fraser's brother dayton jay's in the, in the um dentist so uh it's a full family affair today that all the hainses are in so what's better than working with your two sons can't fault it foot into doug all pegged out so we're out here now you've, you've seen where this is where adrian was having the grab uh, stuff all the stuff going on to his grab wagon from so when you get to a point where you've got all the scalpings in and your concrete is in or going in i always find it important to get rid of all the mud have a jet wash down jet wash all the tools off and then when you're walking in you're not continuously walking mud in what you're doing look I'll show you so you walk in here now all nice and clean boots nice and clean everything sorted and then you're not contaminating everything with mud so you're mud free and I think that's really important just to take a step back and clean it up and move on to the next stage. So this is where we are. We got all the uh, the pegs in now. It's all on really solid ground. Fraser had a nightmare trying to get those pegs into the ground. But we, we have got our 250mm of concrete all the way around. We got our 150mm difference in lower level between there and the finished height of the patio there. 
got our steps starting to be uh, dug out. I've just taken a punt to that from experience, really. Um, we're gonna, we're not gonna go like into the banking and step up. We're gonna use the banking as the steps and formulate the steps. Otherwise, you just dig out too much. There's a land drain we found here, like a big six inch pipe there. And there's water coming out from here, which is from the, the soak away that they've put in down here. So I'm gonna leave that underneath the concrete and leave that running into the soak away because that's what it was intended for. And likewise, there's another soak away. There's actually a land drain in behind that pipe there. And there's that big land drain running through up here connecting into that there so i've just covered it all in weed membranes so the concrete don't cover it and then that'll keep on working then as it always intended was under the concrete F concrete goes up to here so next stage is get the concrete in get everything jet washed we're on clean ground and then we can start uh, stacking out getting the bricks in and uh, next stage doing some brick laying first got to get the concrete in so when that comes We'll get you on a time lapse. Yeah, mix it here. Every time concrete comes, I crap myself. I've done for 33 years, never gonna go away. I'm shitting myself, but <laughs> I think you gotta be on your A game. So uh, shitting myself is good. So we get him in now, get you on a time lapse and uh, get some concrete in, is it? There we go, all the concrete is in. It was 3.6 cubic meters <coughs> of concrete, uh, probably about seven ton, 7.5 ton of concrete, something like that. So that's in. So what I'm gonna do, it is about half two, quarter to three, as an appreciation to the lads, I'm gonna let them go home. And pay him for the full day. I think you've got to do that. We've had a beat in the last couple of weeks on this job, and uh, they've done really great, the two of them. So, uh, yeah, they've cleaned everything up. All the mud is gone. Show you the front now. No more mud. Gone. Barrows cleaned, ready for the next one. Shovels, levels, boards clean. Road clean. So we can get in here now, start laying bricks on a nice clean level. Surface, and a great job, lad. So, we'll regroup and lay some bricks tomorrow, Jay. Is it yeah. right? Friday morning, Jay's just stacking me out some bricks, bit unconventional. My back's playing up, I got a back support on my back. I got discs out in my back, so I put these tubs down. But I've been unorganized this morning. I put these tubs down just to raise them up off the floor, um, to save my aging old back. So, he's got a mix on in the mixer there. That's underway. We've got waterproofer. We've put, decided to put waterproofer and Feb in the mortar mix because uh, there's obviously a lot of water coming through this wall. So we're going to tank the wall and we're going to put waterproofer in the cement. So, how are you, Jay? Well. How are you doing from yesterday, from that concrete in? Still tired. Yeah? Very good. How did you define the concrete in? The hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah? Definitely. Definitely the hardest thing so far, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a nice sleep last night, did you? Yeah. <laughs> so we finally got to a position where the concrete foundations are in, the brick laying starting to go in, we've got all this curved wall set out, clients been out, they're happy with all the way the curved wall's been set out. So a good end to the weekday, isn't it? Definitely. So we've got some nice weather to, to boot, so oh, we're happy, aren't we? Great. For Lovely. Once in our lives. Yep. <laughs> so if you could please like and subscribe or maybe share the video, that would be awesome. And next Sunday. We'll have another video out with some more curved bricklaying. So, see you then. Have a nice weekend.